Hello and welcome to Little Rock Church on this um, this day. We're glad to have each one of you and that you will join us and worship together. Our Sunday school lesson today is entitled Walking Home with Joy and it's taken from two books of the Bible, Psalm 126 and Jeremiah chapter 31 beginning in verse 7. And I just want to say I pray that God will be glorified through this worship that we have together. Now, as we begin, although we have already mentioned that the lesson is from Psalm, one of the commentaries goes back to the book of Job. And, and you don't have to turn there. But when we think about the bad times in the life of the nations of Israel and Judah, we think about the bad times that have occurred in our lives. Um, and, and more recently, during the time of COVID and the effect that they had on church, the hurricanes that we have recently experienced, and other um, things like drop in attendance in all of our churches. And I said all along, and, and you can go back and, and, and pick up on this, I've said all along that during these turbulent times, we were going to be left with a remnant. And I think that you can see where this has transpired, and it is a time of rejoicing. And I want to say this to begin with, um, it's already too late to begin, but to begin with, that if you do not experience um, God's joy in your life after this lesson, it's my fault. Because as I've studied this, I have experienced much joy in, in God's blessing uh, through, these, through these words. Now, Job was a man of God. He, he believed in God, and, and to begin with, his enemies seized his oxen and donkeys and sheep and camels, and then his children and his family and their families were killed. After this, Job had these sores all over his body, from his head to his feet. And to make matters worse, Job's wife demanded that he curse God and die. But God, but Job remained faithful to God, even in the midst of all of this. And I remember a few years ago, we were going to study the book of Job. And I made the comment, I don't like to teach the book of Job, not because it's not a good book and one that can strengthen my faith, faith but 100% because I don't know and I don't want to know how I would um, react to a Job-like experience. And as I was preparing to teach that lesson, it was that very week that my wife had a serious, serious illness and we were all tested because of these events. And, but all of these events, including today's, pale in comparison to what Job experienced and what the nations of Israel and Judah experienced. Israel, when Israel split into two kingdoms, Israel, Israel was the northern kingdom and they were defeated by the nation of Assyria. The southern kingdom was the nation of Judah 
and they were disobedient to God, they began to worship idols. They were warned by prophets that God would judge them. And sure enough, they were in Babylon, came in and destroyed Jerusalem and Judah. Now, they not only destroyed the people and took the people to Babylon for 50 to 70 years, they destroyed the wall that surrounded Jerusalem, they destroyed King Solomon's temple that represented the presence of God, and they left the uneducated and poor to look after the vineyards and farms that were still there. Now, while they were in Babylon, a whole generation of people died, those that had been dis disobedient to God. And so, time expired, and some of the um, people of Judah, God's people, married went in with, with the Babylonians, and they seemed to be even satisfied with their current state of events. But God forgave them and wanted to restore them um, in Jerusalem and the nation of Judah. Now this is interesting to me and I use it in, in my faith that the way God did, did this was he allowed King Cyrus of Persia to defeat the Babylonians. A pagan king, a Gentile king, but God used him. And when he had all these, I'm going to say, leftover Judahites, he said, I'm going to send you back to your to your homeland that you might begin again. Well, thinking about the recent Hurricane Helene in the western um, part of North Carolina in which we live that has utterly destroyed in the area around Asheville and, and Lake Lure and um, Chimney Rock, it's going to take a while to restore um, this area. And I'm um, in my early 70s. And this probably will not be completed in my lifetime, if I had to guess. Well, beginning in verse 1 of the Psalm 20, 126, the psalmist writes, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, now Zion is the city of Jerusalem referred to many times, and Zion was owned as most major cities were, was on a hill. And this psalm is written and is referred to as the Song of Ascent, the Songs of Ascent. Because when people went to Jerusalem, they had to walk uphill. 
Um, and it says, we were like those who dream. We've all heard the phrase that this is too good to be true. And in their minds, to be able to go back to Jerusalem was too good to be true. I can't believe that it's happening, they were saying. It said, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with the shouts of joy. In the time in which we live where there seems to be so much evil, and during this election year, and in a couple of weeks, it will be election time. It is a time that we have this cloud hovering over us. But here, Judah has this same cloud, but as they were returning to their home, they had much laughter. Now, those that know me, and my friend back there on the camera, every time we record post-recording, we have a period of laughter, unplanned, but we both enjoy laughing. I enjoy laughing. As a matter of fact, all I have to do, if you don't think God has a sense of humor, look in the mirror. And when I look in the mirror, I'm thinking, boy, that's, that's good, God. And so we have a time of laughter, but a time of joy. Now, the joy we're talking about is not a time, a season of happiness. Happiness is fine, and sometimes people say, well, as long as you're happy, it doesn't matter what you're actually doing. And that is not true. But we're talking about a time of joy that we can only get from our relationship with God. When we abide with God. When that mother eagle or chicken reaches out their wings and shelter us, and we can feel God's heartbeat. We can feel the safety and security. And Judah was, a, was in a time for 50 to 70 years where they were very insecure. Now they were going back to their home. But think about it. They're going back to their home that has been destroyed. And the leaders are gone. But God is the true leader. They need to repent and turn to God. As I related to before, during the COVID, I said that we would be left with a remnant here in this church and other churches and the church universal that through all this difficult time, we will have a remnant in, from which God can grow his church once again. And I, from my observation, and we're talking to others in this church, I believe that right now at Little Rock Original Freeville Baptist Church in Lucama, we are seeing that remnant grow. We are seeing good times coming because of the faithfulness of the remnant to stay faithful to God and express joy to each other in serving God in a more powerful way. And notice the psalmist says in verse 2, it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them, being Judah. Now, these nations 
that were outside of the nation of Israel and Judah made fun of Yahweh God, the covenant God, because Judah and Israel claimed that God would protect them, and in their minds, and outside um, the minds of the outside countries, they see that God had failed. Now they have come around and say, or saying, the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, the God of Israel, has done great things for them. And the psalmist goes on and says in verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. The Lord has remained faithful and has done great things for us. And we, Judah, have rejoiced. My friends, we need to get over this gloom and doom that exists in our world. And that because we serve a God that loves us, we serve a God through Jesus Christ that gave his life for us. We serve a part of God that is the Holy Spirit that is with us and instructs us and comforts us. My friends, it is a time to rejoice. The psalmist says elsewhere, return to me the joy of of thy salvation not my salvation return to me the joy of thy salvation you remember the joy when you accepted Jesus as your savior that your sins have been forgiven we want that same joy in our daily living and then he goes on in verse 4 through 6 He's asking God to restore our fortunes like the water courses in Negev. Now, Negev is a desert that is south of Jerusalem, and most of the time it is bone dry. But sometimes in the wintertime, rains come, and they have large culverts that transport that water. And that during this time, right before the rain comes, it, it is time for them to um, sow seeds. And the psalmist says we need to sow in tears and reap with shouts of joy. We're going to plant these seeds and they will they will um, uh, grow firm, um, and, and, and produce fruit. And God says that they will produce so much um, like wheat that they at the end um, they shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves the old song bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves because of God blessing us with a bountiful harvest now then we will go through some difficult times when they came in when they came back to Jerusalem they may not have the skill set that they needed. Then we're going to have to rebuild the protective walls around the city of Jerusalem. Then we're going to have. Then we're going to want to rebuild the temple. And quite frankly, if you read, you'll find out that some of the older ones were not satisfied with the temple that replaced the old temple. It was not nearly as grandeur as King Solomon's temple. 
So they felt that it was inferior, but God blessed them with this temple, and it could be used for uh, worship. Psalms 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. We all have a seasons of weeping. We all have seasons of weeping that we've had in the past and we will have in the future. But this presence of God, this abiding will God can bring joy every day of our lives and certainly in the morning. Jeremiah the prophet in verse chapter 31 he says thus says the Lord sing aloud with gladness for Jacob Jacob being the nation of Judah and raise shouts for the chief of the nations proclaim give praise and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. My friends, this is a season of praise to God. I think COVID will always be with us in some form, but we endure. COVID, and yes, when many deaths, but we as a church, the ones that remain, the remnant, that remnant represents the whole, like a remnant of cloth, that remnant that existed during a difficult time, we need to praise God and say thank you for saving us. Save us, God, this remnant. Bless us that you that we might serve you and be obedient to you and that you might be glorified and blessed. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north or Babylon and gather them from the forest parts of the earth. Now listen to this. Among them are the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. Not only are we going to bring back the able-bodied adults and children back to Judah. But God, we are all inclusive, and thank God I worship here at Little Rock Original Freedom Baptist Church that is inclusive. We don't select just a, and you, as you can tell looking at me, we don't select just a good-looking people or the wealthy, or those that can do something for us, we include those that can't. And God is blessing us. And he says, it is a great company. We're going to get those who, are, who would be left in high. Think about it. If they left behind the blind and the lame and the pregnant woman, they would be leaving behind in Babylon those that could not benefit Babylon, but they valued them because they were created in the image of God and that they were part of the nation of Judah. When weeping, they shall come. It will be a great company, the psalmist, the psalmist, the psalmist, the psalmist said, 
It will be all inclusive. And I will lead them back. I will let them back by the brooks of water in a straight path, making it easy when they're sh they shall not stumble. And we talk about this all the time. God forgive us if we allow anyone to stumble. If we cause anyone to stumble, that will prevent them from knowing a loving God in which we love. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So he calls them many names, Israel, Judah, Ephraim, chief of nations, firstborn. We are the new Israel. We are the people of God. And we need to be faithful and follow him. And we need to rejoice. We need to rejoice. Rejoicing is contagious. We need to be a, 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 a church of people that have joy in their lives. Not this. And we all look like that sometimes. We have a lot of noise in our lives. But listen to this closing hymn, one that we used to sing in our churches, about the joy of knowing our covenant God, the, the new covenant in Jesus Christ. Come ye that love the Lord, and let your joys be known. Join in a song of sweet accord. Join in a song of sweet accord and thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward, ascending to Zion the beautiful city of God. Let those who refuse to sing who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King shall speak their joys abroad. My friends, we have been blessed through this ministry of this outreach of Sunday school and Bible study and church services we are literally reaching people all over the world. Last week we we met we reached people in Germany and Sweden. We've reached people in Ukraine, in Russia, in Ireland, United Arab immigrants, all over North Carolina and the United States and in, in in Indiana and Illinois. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The last verse, then let our songs abound. Let us sing for the world to hear and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, where God lives. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One Lord, now and forever. Amen.